Hello. Uh, we're going to start our discussion of Chapter 1 now. Um, I'm going to do this a little bit differently than most of the chapters in that um, I have a slideshow that I used that I um, gave a presentation to a real estate group uh, several years ago and I'm going to use a lot of slides out of that presentation because what we want to talk about is um, is um, open source in general and I think this presentation does a pretty good take of it. I agree with everything in chapter one. I think it's a little dry for a really exciting subject. Maybe my slideshow is too. It's a little bit different take on the topic but um, um, but I, the author and I agree on everything here. We just have slightly different take on the way we present it. Okay, let's uh, with that. Let's start our presentation here. Um, let me see. I need that slide. Okay. Um, we. Um, that's about me. Um, I'm a former Peace Corps volunteer by the way and um, uh, okay quick overview what is open source? On uh, my view open source is a lot of things and it's actually a lot more than just software but um, we have open source software that means software which comes with the source code or software for which the source code is available. Remember software, there's two types of software. There is the source code which is code that looks like algebra that the programmers write to tell the computer what to do and then that goes through a process that we call compilation and linking to become machine code which is nothing but zeros and ones that tell the computer what to do. Um, generally when we buy a piece of software from, like uh, Microsoft Office all we get is the machine code. That's good enough to tell the computers what to do but it's not very useful for programmers. Okay, open source is more than just Linux as we will see in a minute. It's um, and I believe it applies to a lot of uh, non-software stuff. Uh, one area I find intriguing is open source genetics um, or open source in, in agriculture and in the genetics where um, um, we're developing plants that you can freely uh, propagate without paying any license fees to anyone. Uh, there's also a lot of other areas of open source, open source work methods. Okay, we just talked about what source code is. So why shouldn't all software be open source? Why hide it? Well, I, I think there's two reasons to hide it. The first is because that is what programmers use and that's what gets propagated all over the place. Um, there's good financial reasons for hiding your source code. Uh, they're very legitimate and um, um, and I think some software always will be closed source uh, as a result. However, there are other reasons people hide their source code. One of the reasons is just simply the, that it may not be worthy of showing to other people. Mm, a lot of source code is not all that clean. It's got bad things in it. Maybe it's got stolen things in it and they don't want to show it to other people. So um, there's a lot of reasons to hide your source code. Some of them make sense, some of them don't. Why open your source code? Well, I think it's about artistic and creative freedom. It's almost a free speech issue. Um, I like to see other people's software. For one thing, that way I can check what algorithms have been used. I can check that the software does what it's, what they say it does. It gives me a better way to look for errors in the software when I can actually see the software. So it's a matter of quality assurance. It's also a matter of um, 
the freedom to change and improve the product. It's very frustrating to work on a closed source product when you know you could make it better, but you're not allowed to do that. Uh, it also provides you security in an uncertain world. One of the great frustrations in life is having a software company go out of business and take all their customers with them. Um, I've seen uh, companies that will buy another company, a software company, where um, with the idea that they're going to end the company's product and force all those customers to convert to their product. Um, that becomes very, very frustrating with the open source world. That can't happen. Bad things can happen. Bad things do happen. But worse comes to worse, you basically end up maintaining the product yourself or getting some buddies in maintaining the product. That's not an easy, cheap solution, but at least it is a solution. It's better than the alternatives. Um, another problem software co or companies have is um, with uh, proprietary software is that software gets um, pirated within a company. Too many versions of the software gets onto workstations. They get turned into the software, uh, whatever association that is, that takes care of software. And they have to pay huge fees and penalties. And it may be at a time when they just don't have the money to spare. With open source software, that doesn't happen. If a program is successful, you put it on all your workstations. Put it any place you want. Um, it works well for that. Why? Well, I think I just gave a few reasons why open source uh, non-programmers should care about open source software. Uh, let's talk about open source licenses. The book talks about this somewhat. There's basically two major groups of open source software licenses. The one is called the GPL or general GNU general public license. This actually I this was an invention of Richard Stallman's in the 1980s. It basically uh, says that if you get software which is licensed under this license, you can change it, you can modify it, you can share it, you can give it out to everybody in either source code or machine code. But if you do make copies or if you do change it and if you distribute those changes, then you have to give out the source code um, on the same basis that it was given to you. Uh, there are other open source licenses. The one which I think is sometimes called the artistic license, or I usually call it the BSD license, um, basically says this source code is yours. Do whatever you want with it uh, as long as you give us a little bit of credit for our work and absolve the authors from any liability because of any errors in the software or any errors that you may have introduced. But in the case of the BSD license, you do not actually have to give the license out again uh, to anybody. Um, down here, we have um, opensource.org. Opensource.org is a um, uh, the website of the Open Source Initiative. They have um, copies of hundreds of open source licenses. Um, or maybe not hundreds. There used to be hundreds. There were licenses like the Christian software license, the uh, lots of software licenses, some of which had restrictions that I didn't feel were open source. And I think other people felt the same way. A lot of those licenses have disappeared. Um, as I recall, the Christian software license, you were not allowed to use software licensed under the Christian software license to do certain unchristian things like um, um, develop pornography using their software. Um, I, 
I see that as kind of a restriction that really, sh you know, shouldn't be placed on software. It's a tool. It's like a hammer. You don't restrict a person on how they can use a hammer. Um, what they do with it may be illegal, and there may be other impediments to doing things like hammering your children over the head, but um, the license from the hammer maker shouldn't ban the use of hitting your children over the head. That's the government's role. Okay. Uh, once again, open source software is more, open source is more than just software. In particular, um, there is work on open documentation, open content, open data. For example, mapping software is of little value unless you have a, a, what's called geographic information data, GIS data for the um, area you want to map. Um, open standards, uh, open APIs. Uh, I have a friend who's been working on open business plans where people get a mess of people get together, make a business plan. If some of the people really like the business, they may end up being partners in being trying to do the business plan. Uh, there's also a growth in um, open organizations, well, Wikipedia, of course, but also um, um, various unconferences. There are conferences that are put together that are supposed to be very inexpensive, sometimes called bar camps, recent changes camps, unconferences, um, so on. Uh, but mostly open source is about open source methods, um, which means working together for mutual benefit um, and doing this across traditional lines where it doesn't matter who your work, uh, what employer you have, what nationality you have, whether you're living in the US or Israel or Saudi Arabia or um, Guyana. Uh, okay. Open source software is a lot more than just Linux. There are other open source operating systems, some of which are very close to the material covered in this class. Uh, one of these is called FreeBSD. Another one's OpenBSD, NetBSD, FreeDOS, which is a DOS-like operating system that is totally open source. Um, FreeBSD, among other things, is used as the basis of the a Mac OS X operating system. Um, some of these operating systems are really quite widely used. Um, and uh, But Linux gets all the press. Um, and that's not to say anything bad about Linux. I personally use and love Linux very much. But these other operating systems are also worthy. And we're one community. We all work together. Um, and there's open applica source applications that can run on any operating system. I spent a lot of my career writing application software that was fundamentally open source, but it ran only in a very closed environment on proprietary operating systems, um, maybe using some proprietary applications. But my software was open source. We gave it to everybody. In other words, open source is, you know, you're not just open or closed. It's a continuum. Uh, you, can, you can be mostly, whoops, OK. This is uh, means my time's up here. Um, we will come back in a minute after I end this video with part two.